Before I start, uh, where I come from, we firmly believe for you to be able to make sense of where you're headed to, you have to be able to take a good look at where you're coming from. For me, sitting here today brings a lot of memories. It's been 10 years since I made my debut on the international scene in this very same halls. 10 years of realizing that when I got into the internet ecosystem, there was a lot of confusion around identifying what exactly it was we were trying to do, from governance to the technology that all of a sudden faced us. And one of the things that I realized at that point, and which I was very active in, was ensuring that young people had a voice, not just in policy, but in the decision making. And I asked myself that 10 years down the line, has this changed? Yes, to some extent. And then I cast my mind forward to 2032, and I think about the child that I carry within me. Who will be 20 in 2032, and I will be 52? Do I want my child to be engaged in the same conversations around policy making, around governance? Or would I expect to have created the right foundations for such a child to be able to engage in a constructive way and something that I expect to, co to continue to be dynamic. So in engaging with the question, what are the game changers in 2032? I take a look at my present. One of the things I'm currently involved in is around the internet governance and trying to understand that entire confusing ecosystem where we are trying to fit literally an animal that does not fit any current mold in, more, in models of governance that have existed for so long and have not necessarily worked. And one of the things that I see happening in 2032 is this, one, on the, on the policy level. To a certain extent, we will have some central governance of the internet. That's a given. People will argue with me otherwise. But looking at the way human beings are structured and the fact that the internet does not exist in its own space alone, but exists in a bigger vacuum, is the fact that policies and governance will be in place, centralized to some extent. But what excites me more is that there'll be an alternative reality, literally, where people who would be labeled as dissents, as people who have refused to exist within certain confines will thrive, and they will thrive in a particular way, in that the policies and the regulations will be in place. But because the internet is what it is, and because the ecosystem is so dynamic, it will continue to exist outside of those rules. So my, my point for where we are in terms of internet governance today is this, that yes, we can put policies in place. Yes, we can have arguments around what institutions should manage the internet. But more interesting is the fact that as we continue to have those discussions, the internet is moving ahead. By 2032, we will have young people. We will have a whole range of people who are so engaged with the technology that whether or not policy exists is likely irrelevant for them. On the second level is a question that I have. And while we were discussing this panel, I mentioned that I'm quite hesitant to be able to say by 2032, this is what will have happened. For all we know, the internet or some technology will have developed where we'll be in a place where all of a sudden we no longer exist as human beings, but we just engage as robots. It's not impossible. We've seen movies about it. If you cast your mind back to 20, 30, 40 years ago, we had movies where they said that you'd be able to engage with people who are not in the same room with you. We have virtual presence all of a sudden. I remember that yesterday we had a conversation around being able to order something in India and getting it sent to you via the internet immediately and you can actually eat it. It was a mango. Somebody will, will talk more about that. But what I'd like to see in 2032, what I hope will be in place, is a system where rights, particularly internet rights, are being respected. Respected not because the laws have changed, but because there's more respect for them. Because we've been able to build a generation that respects those rights. On the next level that I see, and I think finally, because I know I have just five minutes, is on the concept of the tension that will exist even more between physical, geographical jurisdictions and sovereignty and get into a place where the question is no longer what country are you from. In my case, I will answer Nigeria. Confused a bit because I live in South Africa and possibly maybe I would have changed nationality again by then. But the answer will no longer be I'm a Nigerian or I'm a South African or I'm from, the, I'm from Switzerland or I'm, a, I'm an American citizen. But the answer would be 
to a different kind of question. What are you engaged in? It will be, oh, I belong to the Facebook community. Or I'm of the thinking that's associated with this other place. And I'm using examples that we have now. A place where it's no longer about your nationality, but more about what you engage in on the internet. I think that tension will exist so much so that, to some extent, you'll have states that will exist outside of the normal space of the internet. But more so is that you'll have a generation of people who see themselves as internet citizens and not necessarily as one nationality in one physical space. Thank you.